today will be hacking your droid and this will be by Mr. Aditya Gupta. He is an independent security researcher who is currently pursuing his B.Tech from KIIT University in Bhubaneswar. He loves exploring and breaking security of web applications and mobile devices. He has been a part of DEF CON Chennai and um, he has found and reported a lot of vulnerabilities in some you know, big shot websites which includes uh, MIT, Stanford, Harvard, IIT Kanpur, Janmaag and some of the Indian government websites. I now request uh, Mr. Aditya to come and take over. Our presentation on Wi-Fi security, let's again come back to Android. Amaditya Gupta and I will be speaking about Android security and Android malwares. We will be looking at the Android security issues and also we will be coding our own malware for this Android platform which doesn't need a root permission and we will try bypassing some of the antiviruses for this Android platform. So, this is something about me. I am a college student, independent security researcher. I love researching into mobile security, especially Android. I do look sometimes into the iPhone and I am a pure white hat guy. And I will be joined by Shubo Haldal. He also codes for Android application. He will be joining me in some, in some time. So, this is, the, this is the agenda for today. So it's a kind of a light version of SQL databases 
and Android has got a huge community and developer base. It, the Android official market consists of over 4 billion apps. So Android architecture, this has already been discussed, so I will not be discussing this slide. So let's talk about the Android applications. What are Android applications? All the applications that you install on, on a phone, you download from the market, you get an APK, Google pushes the install asset message and the APK gets installed on your phone. So that is the way the APK gets installed. Or you download it from some of the forums or the website and then you push that APK onto your phone by using ADB or using uh, copying it to your SD card and then install it. Now the Java, uh, the Android application are written in Java. It's uh, mainly based on Java and the layout can be designed both in Java and XML. Its native libraries has been written in C and C++ which can be used in our applications. Like suppose the Android has a camera application, so we don't need to again write the whole camera code in the application. We could just call it in our application and then it will run. Now Android applications consist of five kind of things. They are the activities, they are the content providers, they are the intents, broadcast receivers and services. So this is what Android application look like. It's as I said, it is an archive file. So let's look at it. With which you can interact with. Like you can open a music player application. You want to play uh, play a song. So the screen which will be shown to you is the activity thing. Activity can consist of buttons, buttons, uh, images, or text view, layout, uh, table view, or any such kind of thing. The main.xml file is the layout file which will which will be opened when we open the, our application. It's the first screen which will which we will get to see after we open the application. Now Android application have a life cycle called LIFO. You must be knowing last in first out. Like suppose you open a Facebook app and then you switch on to the media player app. Now after you have played the song from the media player app, when you, when you press the back button, the last Facebook app will come to the front. So that is last in first out. What goes in through the last will come out at the first. So now this is the activity life cycle. The activity is first started, it has got uh, on create state, it has got on start state. So these all will be the states whenever we start any application. Whenever the application is started, it is running and suppose we press the back button. It goes in the background at a pause state. We, we don't exit the app, it just goes to a background. And after it has reached a certain level of apps, like suppose say six apps, six apps are in the background. Now the seventh app will be will be automatically killed. So this is the activity life cycle. Now services. Services are all those are the parts of Android application which work in the background. Like, uh, like I gave the example of media player app. You press the play button using an activity. Now after you press the back button, the activity goes to the back end. But the, but the song keeps on playing. So how does the song keep on playing even if the activity is in background? That is done using services. So that, uh, services are the operations which are performed in the background. They can, they can be file transfer, they can be uh, downloads, they can be music player or any such kind of thing. Now a few more components, broadcast receivers. We will be discussing more about the broadcast receivers when we, we will be coding our own malware. Uh, intents are the uh, we've got intents. Intents are the way we call other activities or some other parts of Android application. They are like uh, they do binding of all the application, all the components of the Android application at the runtime. Now and the last part, content providers. Every application need to store data. At, uh, you can say in the SD card or the SQLite database. So that is done using content providers. We can use content providers to get the data from those databases. As we will uh, see in our malware, we'll be using content providers to get the data, uh, like contacts, call logs, co uh, contacts, call logs, inbox, and every every all the other details. And we'll be sending it to our remote server, all being undetected by any antiviruses. Now, broadcast receivers. We'll see it later. 
and an Android market. It's pre-installed on most of the Android devices. If you are using emulator, you may have to install it manually. It consists of over 4 billion apps. Now, as I said, anyone can code for Android and he can sign up for an Android developer account which is quite cheap at $25 sign up. And another feature of Android market is like you can sign up using anonymous sign up. So if you are a malware developer, you can do anonymous sign up, you can push it to the market and wait for users to download it. So this is about Android market. Now one of the most important part of our, our application is the Android manifest file. Every, every like say you have an application and you want to access some part, uh, some uh, of the phone feature like you want to access the camera, you want to access the call logs, you want to access the contacts. So all the things you have to access, you have to state in the Android manifest file. And those all things will be shown to the user whenever he or she will install your app. So this is kind of not that good from a malware developer point of view, but it, this is quite good from a security p uh, uh, point of view. So whenever you install an app, make sure you look at the permissions and check if it is asking for any suspicious permission or not. So, uh, so these are some of the permission an application can ask for. Now, each of the permission has been designed in such a way like even a normal person can understand what this permission is going to do. It's like read SMS, receive SMS. Even a normal man can understand that this permission is going to read my SMS, read my contacts. Now, this is a screenshot of Android manifest file. It's designed in XML. Uh, the permissions have to be stated using the user's permission, Android name, and then the permission you are asking for. Now, Android security model. Am I going too fast? Okay. You all are getting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Android security model. Each of the Android application is run within its own virtual machine. Like, say you have a phone and you open three of the Android application. Now each of the Android application will be assigned a separate virtual machine and each app will execute only within that virtual machine. So the advantage of using this virtual machine is that suppose one of the application crashes, so it doesn't affect the whole of the phone and the other apps keeps on running. So this is run, uh, all the Android application are done within a Darwin virtual machine which has got a unique user ID and group ID as we see in the Linux file system. By default, no permission is granted. You have to ask them in the Android manifest file. And all the permission have to be approved by the user. It's either all or none. And the APK files must be signed with a certificate. Now, if you are an Android developer, you have to make, you have to sign the Android application with a certificate so that you can push it to the market and the users can install it. If you don't use the certificate, it would give a bad certificate error. And the users won't be able to use it. Now the best part of this is like you can generate your own certificate which may be valid for any time period you wish, which may, it may be valid to 5 years or 10 years. So you can make your own certificates and then sign your application with this and then push it to the Android market. So there is no certificate authority, you can make your own certificates using JAR signer and key signer tool. Now this is the Android security model, each of the application is run within its own virtual machine uh, and the base of all is the Linux kernel and the system process is running with the user ID of system. So, each of the Android application are given a unique user ID and group ID. So, Darby virtual machine, it was, it was created by Dan Bostein. Now, it is register based instead of the Java virtual machine which is stack based. It has been designed in such a way that uh, it operates in a much faster and it uses the memory more efficiently in an Android. Like uh, it uses Java virtual machine which is specially customized version of Java virtual machine you can say. It runs the Dalek executable files like uh, say you code in Java and then at the runtime what, what the uh, Eclipse does. You, you have a developer environment called Eclipse for coding for uh, Android. At the runtime, all the Java files will be compiled into some uh, less or equal number of text files, which will be executed on the Dalu virtual machine. Reverse engineering. This is the file. Uh, this is the process. Like we write our Java files, uh, it gets converted to text and it gets compiled to the APK APK file format. This is the making of the APK. We uh, create our Android application, we sign
uh, it gets converted to D, uh, text format using DX tool. The, uh, and finally, we get classes.dx, then we uh, get the unsigned APK, we sign it using JAR signer, and then finally we have the we have the valid application which we can use it anywhere. This is uh, this is the, all of the code if you want to do each of each and everything manually, but it's automatically customized in Eclipse development environment. So just as we saw the uh, development process of Android application, we can see the reversing of Android application. Like we have the APK file, we'll be converting to it to DX, DX format, and we'll be finally getting the Java files. So let me show it. I have a I have a known malware name at Boldring. I have its APK, and I'll be using a APK tool name APK tool. It has it has been integrated with Smiley and Backsmiley, so we can use it directly, or either we can use the Backsmiley tool, or we can use the Backsmiley tool independently. So let's use the APK tool. So we can see that it is back smelling and then converting the Android manifest file and then all the other resources. So finally what we get is some of the smiley files which is similar, which is you can read but like let's see some smiley files. Like these are the three folders that have been created on the basis of the activities present in the Android application. So let's analyze the code read. So we have this much smiley files. We'll, we'll also be doing this, uh, this converting it to Java files. So and we'll be understanding the difference between both of them, and you can use either of them based on whatever preference you have. This one code, code is more readable to you, or you can you are more comfortable with the Java code. So let's see. Use it and uh, open it with any of the editors. So this is the smiley code. Yeah. What? Yeah, we can open it, edit it, and then recompile it to get another APK. This is one of the way we can also create malware. Like you can decompile it, insert our own malicious scripts into this file, and then recompile it using the build command in the APK tool. Now let's reverse engineer it using text to Java and JDBGI to get the Java codes which are more which we are more familiarized with and which are more easily readable. First we have to extract the archive file. So we will be using 7zip. Extract the file. We get the classes.dx file, and then we have to we have to convert the dx file to jar for file format using text to jar. So it is a command line tool. You can do it text to jar, and then you have to enter this just the classes.dx. So it will generate the jar file. So jar file is generated. Now we can open it using any of the jar jar converters like JDGUI to analyze the Java codes. So this is a jar file, let's analyze it. These were all the three folders we, we found in the smiley code. Let's look in the gold green. It has got three file upload, uh, three activities, upload dreams, JetJ receiver and JetJ service. Let's look in the service thing. Look, this is the uh, this is how you analyze a malware. Like, if it is making any remote connections to a server, it is it, if it is connect uh, doing any kind of malicious activities. This Goldream malware was uh, in actual a legitimate app being inserted with a malicious code and then repackaging it to uh, so that whenever a user will use this application, he'll be shown a normal legitimate app, but in the back